This is the Children's Sunday School lesson for August the 11th in the year 2024. And we are on Esther part two. It's going to come from Esther's, Esther chapters three and four. We did one and two last week. If you didn't watch it, it makes sense to go back and watch last week's lesson first. Um, last week we had three main characters who were introduced. The first one is Queen Esther. That's her Persian name, but her real name is Queen Hadassah. She's a Jew, but she's hiding the fact that she's a Jew. The second main character is her husband, the king, whose name is King Xerxes, or King Ahasuerus. And the third one is her cousin, who's like a dad to her. He raised her in his house because her parents were dead, and his name is Mordecai. And he is a Jew, and he's not afraid to let anyone know that he is a Jew. Now, at this time... There was a fourth character that comes into the story, and his name is Haman. Can you say it? Haman. Haman is not good. He is a bad guy. And Haman had been lifted up by King Xerxes to be the second most important ruler in the land. The king was the most important, then Haman, and then everybody else. And the king had made a rule that whenever Haman went through this gate or went through the city, that people in front of him would bow down, bow down, bow down with your knees to the ground because he was so important. Well, um, Mordecai was a Jew. Why would it be a bad thing to bow down to another person? Think about it. Who are we supposed to worship? Only God, right? We're not supposed to worship any, any people. So when we go bowing down to people, that is sin. So Mordecai wouldn't do it. And it gets tattled back to um, Haman. And the next time Haman went down through, he watched to see, and it was true. Mordecai did not bow down to him, and it made him very angry. Made him so angry that instead of just trying to hurt Haman, hurt Mordecai, he decided to destroy all of the Jews in the whole kingdom. That's a lot of people. He's going to have them killed. So he goes to the king and he says, there's, a, there's a, a group of people that live among us here in Persia who um, do not obey the same laws as we do, and they need to be destroyed. And I will give 375 tons of silver or 10,000 big bags of silver. It would be worth maybe a couple million dollars into the treasury if you will allow me to get rid of them. And the king said, keep your money. Here's my signet ring. And he had a ring that had um, a special mark on it that said, this is a law. And so Haman wrote the law. And the law said that on March the 7th of the next year, which was like 10 months away, that every Jew was going to be killed and the people in the cities in towns would be the ones to kill the Jews and then everything that the Jews owned could belong to the people who had murdered them. It's a really sad law. So um, he wrote the law up, put it on pieces of paper and well, it probably wasn't paper in those days, probably on, I don't know, parchment. And then took the king's signet ring and marked it so that everybody knew it was the king's new rule. Well, as soon as that rule came out, everybody in the, who was Jewish knew that they were going to be killed the next year, and they were pretty upset. But Haman and the king were just in the palace drinking. And um, Mordecai did something about it right away. Mordecai ripped his clothes. He went and laid at the gate of the palace. He couldn't go into the palace because he had his clothes ripped. So he ripped his clothes. He put on sackcloth, which is like a, a burlap sack, and threw ashes on his head and just laid there and screamed, oh, 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 and just cried and cried really loud and bitterly. And some of Queen Esther's servants saw him out there and said, Esther, your cousin is laying outside the city gate. He's laying there in sackcloth and ashes. He's got his clothes all ripped. So she gathered together some clothes and sent the clothes with the servant 
down to Mordecai. And he said, I'm not putting those clothes on. He says, something terrible has happened here. Look at this. Look at this paper. Look at this parchment. They're going to kill all of the Jews. You go tell my cousin Esther to go in and tell the king not to do it. And so um, he sent evidence back to Queen Esther. And Queen Esther sent uh, the messenger back and said, I can't go to the king. You know that in our kingdom, the only one that can see the king is somebody who is called to go into the king. And if I just walk into the throne room, he'll kill me. You can't do that. He hasn't called me for a whole month to come to be with him. And I have to stay in my part of the house because he hasn't called me. Now, if when I walked in, if he lifted, handed out his scepter to me, then I would be safe. But I don't know. That's too dangerous because he might not lay out his scepter to me and then I'd be dead. I don't think I could do this. And Mordecai said, how do you know that God didn't put you in that spot as the queen just so you could save the Jewish people? He said, maybe just for a time like this, you were chosen by God to go and talk to your husband, the king. Oh, I don't know about this. This is a pretty scary situation here. I don't know that I can do it. He's still laying out there and she's still thinking about it. And then um, she said, okay, do this. Talk to every Jew in the city of Susa. And tell every Jew in the city of Susa for three days and three nights not to eat anything or drink anything. Just spend all of your time fasting and praying to God that I might be safe. And if you all will pray, then me and all of my servants in the palace will pray as well. And at the end of three days, I will go in to see the king. And if I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. But you guys all pray and fast about it, and we'll pray and fast about it for three days and three nights, no eating, no drinking. And then I'll go in to see the king, and maybe he'll hold out the scepter to me, or maybe he'll kill me. The memory verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. Dear Father God, sometimes you ask us to do things that are absolutely scary. When Esther went in to see the king, she was taking her hands in her, her life in her hands. And that's next week's story. What will the king do whenever she comes in to see him, even though she hasn't been called? But she's willing to do it after much prayer and fasting. She's willing to step forth and do what her cousin Mordecai asked her to do. When Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman, if he would have bowed down, that would have made, that would have made perfect sense. That would have been the good thing to do, but he didn't do it. He did the right thing. He trusted in you. Help us, O oh Lord, to always trust in you too. In Jesus' name, amen.